Well, good evening, everyone, and the grace and the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. This is the first of the evening reflections of 2022, and uh, I'm sure you would agree with me that there's no better way to begin a new year than in prayer and focus on God's word. And that's what we'll be doing tonight for a short time. Looking back over a challenging year and looking forward in hope for what's to come. So I'm pleased that you're, you're online with us tonight and I hope that the time we have together will be a time of blessing for you, whatever your circumstances. Let's pray. God, our Father, we give thanks to you that as things have fallen for us, we're here to begin another new year in which we'll face personal challenges, no doubt, but help us to remember that we're part of a people called to meet the challenges of their time as we offer the gospel to men and women who are in need. And as we live and move and speak and witness, always in the power of your Holy Spirit. And we pray that that same Spirit will be with us tonight as we focus our minds on your word, as we seek the best way forward in our Christian witness. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, folks, it's only natural that we look back on the year that has passed. And I'm sure no one would disagree if I say that it's been dominated by COVID. And having to adjust our lives in many ways to accommodate the restrictions and the the recommendations that have been coming from government as well as our own church. And one of the, the things which comes through in conversation from time to time is people saying to me that they think probably our lives have been changed forever by COVID. And I think that there's a lot of truth in that. And perhaps you can think of some of the ways that our lives will continue to be lived in the shadow of COVID for some time to come. I know that something has entered into my daily routine, which will be continuing for some time, and it involves this wee plastic gizmo. I'm sure that you're familiar with this. This is a lateral flow test that we're recommended to take. And at the moment, I'm taking one of these every single day. It's quite a moment, actually, when you pour the, the liquid onto the, the top of the, the, the plastic and um, into the wee, the wee hole there. And, it, and then you wait for the result, that 15 minutes that you have to wait to see if you're positive or negative. I can tell you it's done wonders for my prayer life, you know, just hanging on there in faith at the end of the, and giving thanks at the end when I see I've only just got one line on the, on the window. But it occurred to me that really in some ways what I was doing was, was living out something that the Apostle Paul encourages in a very early Christian community with regard to, to prayer. Um, you're probably familiar with this. It's in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verses 16 to 18. And, and Paul says to, to these very early Christian converts that they're, they're young in the faith, let's remember. He says, be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Be joyful always. Pray continually. 
give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, I have something to say about prayer in the, in the heart of, of this. Well, let's begin with, with the first of these commands, if you want to, to put it like that. You know, Paul is saying, be joyful. Be joyful. And not just be joyful when you've got something to celebrate, but be joyful always. Now, what we have to grasp there is that Paul is not talking about happy, clappy joy. What he's talking about is the deep assurance we have in all circumstances that God is with us, that God loves us, that God has a good purpose for us. And that that is something that can survive within us in every circumstance. We can be aware of this, we can be convinced of this, even if we don't feel joyful, we can lay our hands on these promises that we have been given with regard to our God. So we've got that. Paul is telling us to be joyful. And then we move on to this other aspect of his encouragement to, to these people. He says, pray continually. Pray continually. Not just when you're under pressure when you feel a need to pray as I do when I'm fiddling with my lateral flow test. But he says, pray continually. And that really follows on from the injunction to, to be joyful because if we are aware of God present with us in his love and in his goodness, then that is the beginnings of prayer. It's the realization that God is with us and we are responding to that in faith. And basically, as someone once said, keeping company with God, we're aware that throughout the day, no matter what our circumstances, we are in the presence of God. And that means his love is flowing out to us and we're living according to his good purpose. Well, how then do we work this out in our lives, the, the, the idea that we're praying continually? Well, at a very practical level, you know, um, as we are, are conscious of, of God's presence, then we can almost have daily conversations with us, with him, as we're going through the day. Whether it's a, a good experience, whether it's a bad experience, whether we become aware of something wonderful in the world that uh, is grabbing our attention and, and we're grateful for that and we, and we give thanks. We can be constantly turning to our God in prayer. And that's part, I think, of what Paul is, is saying when he's telling these Christians in the first century AD and also telling us to pray continually. I was talking to someone just the other day there about the TV series that was on BBC not that long ago. I, I wonder if you saw it at all. Um, it was called Rev. It was about a Church of England vicar whose name was the Reverend uh, Adam Smallbone. That's right, I almost slipped my memory there. How, how could a name like that uh, slip my memory? Adam Smallbone, that's right, played wonderfully by Tom Hollander. I have to say. And one of the things that I used to, to like about Adam was that he would be wandering through his parish or he would be in a, a certain set of circumstances. And quite naturally, that there would be a voice over his voice. And he would be quite simply talking to God about the way he was feeling, about the challenges he was about to face or moments of thanksgiving to God, quite natural conversation with the God who was with him and the God who's promised his love, his strength, his goodness in Adam's life. There are times, of course, you know, um, when even that, you know, I'm talking about a natural 
conversation with God, but even that can be difficult for us. I remember, and, and I was trying to remember where I came across this, but it was either something I read or something I'd heard when someone said that they were in such a state of anxiety that it was very difficult to pray. They said they were too nervous to pray. The emotions were piling in and it was difficult to formulate even thoughts. I've always found that in circumstances like that, when it's difficult to know exactly what to to think, never, even, even apart from what to say, we just offer ourselves to God in that moment. He knows what's going on in our minds. He knows all the emotions that are tumbling over at the centre of our lives. And just to, to offer ourselves to God, he knows we're finding it difficult. Here I am, Lord, and I'm looking for your strength and your peace. And that's part of praying continually. That's, that's part of every now and again turning our hearts towards God in the, the course of our daily lives. I once um, heard someone saying in a moment of blessing that it was as if God had turned his heart towards him. Well, what we have to realize is that whether we, whether we experience it in an intense way or not, God is continually turning his heart towards us. And it's good for us at times to, to acknowledge this. We're in God's presence and we respond to that. That's, that's what, what prayer is, is all about. Well, let's take this a wee bit further with, with what Paul is saying to these early Christian folk in Thessalonica. He says, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in all circumstances. This is the one that always gets us, isn't it? Be joyful always, pray continually, um, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. What would happen if one day I put my liquid into the lateral flow plastic and it comes up with a double line? It comes up as positive. Now it's hard to imagine what your response would be in that moment until you've actually come up against it. And uh, you know, I hope and pray I, I never do. But if it does, then what I have to remember is that God is still with me. God has turned his heart towards me. God can provide a strength beyond my own strength. He can provide a peace that goes deeper than any source of peace that I might turn to in the world. That, that, will, that will never change, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what falls to me in, in terms of, of human experience. That is a reality. And I can give thanks, even in the worst of times for that presence, that loving, that powerful, that good presence in, in my life. And I think as we go forward into a, a, a new year, and perhaps you know, we're, we're better placed than we were this time uh, last year, when there were so many restrictions and there was really quite a bit of fear and apprehension. We're better placed now because of the vaccine and because of routines that have just become part of our daily uh, experience. But it, it's good for us still with so much that's uncertain 
to realize that as we take these first steps into a, a new year, we're going in the presence of God, it goes before us, and in every circumstances, in every circumstance, no matter how we feel, he is still God, and he's going forward according to his good and loving purpose. Let's pray. God, our Father, we acknowledge that there are times when it's difficult for us to look at these words from the Apostle Paul and to say that this is where we are as a people, joyful always, praying continually, giving thanks in every circumstance. At a human level, it's almost like a, a council of despair. But we know that these words come from your Holy Spirit. We know that you are aware of the challenges we face as we seek to work out our Christian lives. And we know that you can supply us with every spiritual resource that's needed for us to go forward in hope and for us to grow in our faith. So, we place our hands into your, we place our lives into your hands tonight and ask that you would take us forward and be present to us whenever and whatever our circumstances. And we ask tonight, Lord, that you would turn our minds now to people we know who need our prayers thinking particularly at the end of the day of people who will have difficulty sleeping tonight because of anxiety, because of a loved one who needs their attention. And we ask that you would give them your strength. We remember also, Lord, people who are not looking forward to this week ahead because of challenges at work, difficult conversations that need to be had, Decisions that need to be made, draw near to them, Lord, with your wisdom. We pray also for people who will be working tonight to keep us safe and to be on hand for emergencies. Those will be working through the night in our hospitals. Especially, Lord, we pray for them so much under pressure. And be with our families wherever they are be with all our friends in our own particular circle. And we pray, Lord, that as we look forward, it will be a peaceful, a joyful, a safe 2022. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.